Okay? So you have to square this. So square it. So multiply by itself. Okay? Or raise it to 2. And then you multiply that by uh, 3.1416. Okay? So just to round off. So you already have your area. Area of influence. So since this is kilometer radius, so if you square it, it becomes square kilometer. Okay, so 78.54 square kilometer. However, we have the density of, of Santa Rosa where I will put my, uh, my put my, my business is about 7,564 per square kilometer. So, yeah. So, in reality, um, you have to multiply this, the density, multiplied by your area. And again, you have to factor in that these are people. So, round down. Uh, and then zero is the, the digits, you know, the decimal point. Then remove that. So this is now more or less how many people or how many customers are in your circle of influence. Some of you might 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 question this and say, "Hey, sir, how come your circle of influence only five kilometer radius and you have already, um, you know, circumscribed?" The whole of Santa Rosa. Because if you look at the, this area, this is not a perfect circle, okay? So you have to understand that uh, this area is not a perfect circle, okay? And so when you have it like a perfect circle, of course, uh, it is exaggerated by, you know, at least, uh, you know that it's going to be exaggerated because uh, nothing uh, is really a perfect, you know, nothing, nothing are perfect uh, circles. Especially when you look at the area, usually it's composed of uh, custom uh, shapes of land and all that. So it's hard to really find a, a circle. But again, but this is just a basis for calculation. So we can say that our market, primary market, will be the ones in the in the circle of influence, which are about. 594,076 people. Okay? Now, this is the one of the most critical. You know, you have to divide this by 5. Why are we dividing it by 5? Because that is the average number of people in a household. That is according to the FIES family income. Actually, you need to download this. Expense survey every three years and uh, i think the last time was in 2018 2021 2020, yeah 28 2021 so in 2021 that was the last and since it happens every three years i am expecting that uh, they are going to do an analysis of a survey of sorts this year so the results of 2021 was published in 2022 so it's now out there okay so it's available actually if you look at it from the net look for this because this gives you the data of the uh, amount of uh, expenditures relative to the total expenditures our household um, spend so for education medicines food okay so since uh, we know for a fact that the average size of the family is about 5, 5, 5 5.2, I think. Uh, okay, so let's uh, look for it outright, you know, from our co-pilot. Okay. So this is now the next question. What is the average people per household in the Philippines? I want to do the latest FIES. I think it's... Uh, the central number is about 5. So it's either 4.8, 4.7, 4.7, 4.8, to maybe as high as 
1.5.2. And you could actually settle for uh, 5. Oh, I think this is in 2020. Uh, so it's a bit small, considering that uh, a lot of people died in 2020. So 4 point what? So let's say that's uh, still the uh, the case today. So we have 4.1 people per household. So if there are uh, 4.1 people per household, how many households do we have here? In our primary market, so divided by four point one. Okay, so again, you have to round it off. So this is your number of families. Oh, by the way, we forgot to include the fact that this is the population in 2020 okay so i i i overlooked that because according to this okay this is in 2020 but it is already 2024 now so what will be the go a good uh increase uh rate of increase so the rate of increase according to this is about Oh no, there's no increase uh, mentioned here. So uh, we'll have to look for that again. Okay, so here we ask Copilot to give us the annualized uh, compounded annual gross, gross uh, rate of increase of population in Santa Rosa City. The annual growth rate would be from 2015 to 2020 is uh so yeah it, it computed for that so he has the formula of, uh if we have 2015 353 2020 414812 so uh what will be the growth rate in the last uh 5 years from 2015 to 2020 so According to this, the, the growth rate is approximately 3.41% per year. Do you, you can approach this in two things. You can look at the average increase, 3.41. Okay. Or you can just rely on a, a much smaller amount of uh, increase in population to be conservative. So if it is 3.41, you can choose something like 3% to approximate the growth from 2021 to 2024. Because in this uh, example, it's only up to 2020. So if you want to add, um, if you want to add, so this is the formula, right? The If you want to add the rate of increase, so one3 Zero 0.3, right? More or less. Uh, I just rounded down the, the decimal. So we have only 3% a year. Raised to 4 because it's been 4 years. So we have 466,874. So we have here round down. Okay, so this is now your population. Okay. So if we just copy this, you will have 8,513 now persons per square kilometer, knowing that it's increasing at 3% every year. The area of the circumference is still the same. The, the influence is still the same. Now, the primary market, how many people are in the circle of influence? We have to make use of uh, the number of persons now, which is in this case is I-11. Oops, sorry. Uh, 
अब सर्जन इलेवन आई थिंक इट्स आईस I seventeen. Okay, so it's going to be I seventeen. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it has to be the density multiplied by the population. Sorry, sorry. So it's going to be the density of the place multiplied by the area of influence. Okay, so that's our idea. And then the number of families would be. Yeah. So the good thing about this Excel that we are doing. We are actually able to use this uh, with any other cities in the Philippines, etc. Okay? So now we have an increased number of families in our area of influence, the initial, you know, the primary market. Because if you say, for example, oh, what about me, sir? I, I plan to, to uh, start a business on the border of whatever that is. So if you are in the border, you can do, you know, a, a like a sub, uh, uh, sum in uh, average of the two cities bordering your business. So usually the the Philippines also has its okay, the Philippines also has its a uh, number in the density. Okay. So, yeah, so this is our number of families now. So, this is our basis because that will be the basis of your computation next. Now, the next thing that you need to do is to look for the average expense, <coughs> average expenditures of people in the area. Okay, so this is harder to find. So, let's see if we can, uh, we are able to do something about this okay what you are looking at is the latest actually to yung pinaka latest eh, 2021 because the next is going to be 2024 eh, ngayon pa lang yun, right so 2021 this is the total average total in average annual family expenditures per capita income decile by region now this is i know that this is hard to understand this is gonna be hard to understand in fact Ito nga paghanap ng data, even the mere looking for this data is actually hard already. Okay? But now, I'm giving it to you so you no longer have to to search for it. Okay? So, you need to save this because when I was doing my business plan for our proposed diagnostic lab, this is the one that I used. Okay? So, I'll just explain to you the uh, the components of this so that you will understand so in the in in the first uh area you know so to first uh, row from row 9 to row 19 we have the philippines as a whole okay so we have the estimates here um well we have standard area but uh, don't pay attention to that anymore so just focus on the estimates anyway look at the coefficient of variation very small okay so it's a tight data so you know it's very less reliable so we have the first decile second decile up to the 10th decile if you are not familiar with that so you are doomed forever no i'm just kidding so if you're not familiar with this this is actually the number of the families you know and then you divide it by 10 so if it's quartile i divide by four right it's decile so it's divided by 10 so meaning if you belong to the 10th decile, these are the super duper rich people. <laughs> if you look at their expenditures, look at the total expenditures in in um in thousand average per thousand is five hundred eleven thousand per year. Annual toy annual. This is annual, okay? And then the ninth decile it goes down to three twenty nine, goes down to two seventy one. Of course, maybe some people say, ah, I don't believe that. You know, the rich people only have 511,000 a year? Actually, this is the average. So, class mark, sabihin na natin, it's just the, the median, okay? But in this case, average. So, I'm sure, you know, if you're like uh, uh, the ones from the billionaire 
uh, club or something like that. Siyempre, you are at the top, but since there are many people here, when you divide it, it will settle within a certain point. So, that is the measure of central tendency, okay? So, don't question that data anymore because uh, this is the report, you know? Or maybe you can even say that, well, you know, if you look at it, on the expenditure side, the rich, the super rich people, they don't eat so much, you know? Uh, there's just there's a few of them in the house. So why would they eat so much, right? Compare it to uh, a poorer, you know, family with like 10 of you, you know? I mean, well, of course, you can say, well, there is people, while they don't eat much, of course, they eat, uh, you know, the more, the more expensive food. So that is the reason why it, it more or less, you know, it corrects itself. So let's just say because there's just too many of them in this in this uh, in this tenth decile, the average is five hundred eleven thousand. Maybe um, you know uh, this is on the lower end. Maybe the the lowest here maybe about four hundred fifty thousand only, but the highest is about one point two million. Who knows, right? About hundred thousand, or maybe even more, right? So. Let's just take it as it is because anyway, we are not after the individual people who are rich. Uh, they're just 1% of the totality anyway. And you don't see yourself, you know, selling food uh, to them, right? If you open a restaurant, you don't expect an Ayala, you know, uh, eating at your restaurant anyway, right? So it's just playing on the average, okay? So I, I hope that that is clear, you know? So this is just the average, so just pay attention on the average, okay? And this is the total, right? Now, that is not important for us because that is the, the Philippines. So you go to Region 4 because uh, I'm talking about uh, Calabarzon, I'm talking about Laguna. Again, uh, this is not mine, you know, it's uh, it, it came from the Family Income Expense Survey. So we have NC... Are, yeah, it's finished already. So we have the uh, National Capital Region, still National Capital Region. And then we have the Calabar Zone. I think the next one here would be Calabar Zone. No, still. So this is complete, I think, you know. The Locos Region, Locos Norte. So if you are planning to, to start a business in these places, you already have your data here. So Region 3, Batan, and all that, Bulacan, Pampanga, etc. Now we go to Region 4A, which is Calabarzon, which is composed of Batangas, Cavite, Laguna. So, of course, Santa Rosa, my dear Santa Rosa, is here. All right? So, I will have to look at all, all of these. So, I know for a fact that uh, the expense in thousand goes from 136560 a year up to a high of 472600 a year. Okay, so if you go back to the original Excel that we have, what do you do?